Okay, there it is. Next, we're going to apply a vacuum splint for uh, Katie's leg. Okay, the vacuum splint works great for a body part you want to immobilize in the position found. In this case, uh, Katie's uh, left knee is injured and it's slightly flexed. Uh, her ankle is also slightly flexed. We can immobilize it exactly in that position found with the uh, um, vacuum splint. Uh, there, these splints come in several different sizes. Okay, so again, you have to, you know, this one might work for a, an infant or a pediatric size uh, or upper extremity. Uh, so uh, you are going to need the, the vacuum splint itself. You also are going to need the pump and the cord if they are not attached. So uh, once we have those, again, after you assess your injury, um, again, you want to ask, ask the patient to you know, don't move and you want to try to do as little movement of the body part as possible. Um, again, if you need to add air to this, um, you can do that, uh, but you want to make sure that the, the beans inside uh, are loose. Um, if not, uh, you can add air, air to it simply by attaching the tube to the top and connecting it and pumping some air in there if you need to to make it looser. Once it's loose enough, then you want to apply, apply it again as best as possible without moving the leg. A lot of Velcro. Again, it works a little bit easier if you have someone helping you. But again, you want to try to make the Velcro as tight as pop possible without changing the shape of the original injury. Again, before you take the air out, just want to make sure that these are fastened as tightly as possible without injuring her. Uh, to pull the, take the air out, you do want to move this down to the bottom. Again, it just some, sometimes it force you have to force it in a little bit. And then when you connect this, make sure that you listen to the little snap. Um, okay, once that's all secure. And what you're going to do is you're just going to suck the air out. Again, ask the patient, tell the patient that it's going to, the splint is going to harden up on them. So that you don't want it to uh, be too tight, but you do want it to apply some support or, uh, for a rigid splint. How's that, Katie? Yeah, one more. Okay. And again, you should be able to see the sides of the bag form with the little ridges. How's that, Katie? So both are loose. Is that okay? It might be the Okay. So again now we have the splint is rigid, okay? And if we w wanted to, we can ask her to try to move her limb to see how we wouldn't do that in real life. But, um, and then the last thing that you wanna make sure you wanna do is tickle her toes, I mean, check the pulse and the circulation. 
for the distal pulse. And then once we have it in this position, we want we can uh, uh, put her on a backboard and send her off or, or transport her. One of the things you want to make sure that they uh, at the emergency room or the paramedics do not cut this piece of equipment. Uh, hopefully your address and stuff is written onto it so that you get it returned. And that is it. I need to move this back to the top, put it back on, and then just apply. So you can pump some air into it and it should make it more movable. And that is a vacuum splinting. Thank you, Katie.